Sometimes I'll see a cool tattoo online and I'll think, wow, how on earth did they pull that off? So uh, one of the methods I've developed for myself to practice is uh, I'll go over to the sketching mode over here. I'll save the picture of the tattoo that I like and then I can uh, import it here. So I'm gonna pull up this uh, tattoo that Kent Bartley did. Just the texture that he's able to achieve that really sets apart from other skulls that I've seen. So what I'll do is I'll import this into my app and it brings it in here. It's in edit mode right now. That's why um, it says done and revert. I'm gonna um, bring the transparency down first because I'm gonna make a stencil of this. I'm gonna put it over on this side here because this is where I'm gonna create the stencil and then I'm gonna bring this picture over here and this is what I'm going to uh, look at as reference while I'm working on uh, the actual tattoo. Um, I'm gonna zoom in a bit, bring it up a little bigger, and then I'm gonna click Done. So now I'm gonna switch to the uh, pen tool and I'm gonna create the, uh, the stencil real quick. And you can pinch zoom in this app and rotate, makes it a little easier. I'm going to uh, trace this out. Now you notice if I draw too light, see how it breaks like that? The reason is, is I coated it this way to where you have to actually apply a little bit of pressure because what's been happening with the iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil is when you'd start a line, you'd get kind of a blob at the beginning. What I found is even if you barely touch the screen, it registers at a force of like 0.33 which probably doesn't mean much to anybody but what I did is I coded it to where it won't start drawing until the pressure is uh, above 0.33 so what that means is you actually have to apply a little pressure and that helps get rid of those blobs at the beginning of the uh, stroke. I am going to attempt to try and match the style of this tattoo that Kent has done in hopes that I can learn something and apply it to my own tattoos and hopefully uh, bring the quality of my work up. I have no clue how Kent tattoos, what his techniques are, what, uh, what he runs his machines at, what types of gray inks he uses. I don't know any of this stuff. so. All I'm going to do is uh, see what I can figure out just following along, looking at his tattoo and using what I'm comfortable with. So when I tattoo, I use four shades of gray and then I can dip between the grays to get a few more inter intermediary value steps. I'm going to um, bring the alpha up a little more on this just to help me see a little better. Click done. I do know Kent has his own skull that he uses for art reference. Um, I don't know if he used it for this or not. Look at this texture. I think that's the uh, one aspect of this tattoo that I'm very interested in and also a little intimidated by because I imagine there's a lot of time spent creating this texture. Let me um, turn off the uh, visibility of the, f of the uh, photo of the tattoo. Just see what, uh, what more information I could uh, get in here. I could get, I mean, you can get way overboard. One thing I've learned is when I put too much detail into my stencils, it's much easier for me to get lost while I'm working. So, um, this may have been more detail than I normally would have put in a stencil, but for now, we'll just see how it goes. Oh, let's revert. I accidentally moved it. I wasn't done. Okay. 
Cool. All right, so the next step is what I'm going to do is take that picture, bring the opacity all the way up, and then I'm just going to bring it over here like this so that I can reference it. And then I'll click Done. And then I'm going to drop the opacity down on this pen layer just to help me uh, see my needle strokes better. All right, so once that's all done, I can click the transfer button here and then go back over to the uh, tattoo section and that puts it in. Now uh, I'm going to bring the opacity all the way up and uh, the tray you can click that and that now pops out of the way to give you a little more room. Now if I want to be able to zoom in while I'm working I'll click this and now I can zoom in and kind of cheat a little which I'm going to do anyway because I think it'll be better for demonstration purposes on this video. I'm going to save this Bartley practice. I'm going to go ahead and clear the canvas here just to demonstrate a couple things before I get started. So techniques I'll be doing with my shading. Um, back and forth like this. And notice I'm keeping the back and forth rather close together. Um, getting too, too big a stroke tends to um, saturate the ends more than the center and that's simply because as you go this direction and you change direction, the needle's staying down there longer as you change direction and so it ends up getting much more saturated at the ends. So uh, when I do my uh, back and forth, I tend to keep it pretty close just so I can get some nice saturation. Um, I'll also probably be doing some tight circles. And again, um, I'm not getting too big because uh, the bigger your circles, um, you can get to where you're missing the center. You're just completely missing it. So it's better to keep the circles tight um, and not too fast either because it takes longer to actually f get it fully saturated and um, it kind of churns up the skin a lot. So if you can keep that uh, a little not too fast, uh, saturate it a lot quicker the uh, in and out shading where I'm kind of starting my hand letting the needles go into the skin as my hand is already moving and then bringing the needles out of the skin while the hand is still moving so I'll be using this technique as well to help get a uh, soft feathered um, shade all the way around hard edge like let's say uh, I can use my magnum for a hard edge I can actually bring it this way and you can actually get a nice hard edge that way. And then you can um, circles, tight circles off of that to bring it out. And then um, soften it a bit. And actually, um, this is one scenario where um, I actually would work a little quicker around the edges because it softens it if you're going um, a little faster. So that's another technique. Um, can also come off that edge um, this way as well by whipping, whip shading, putting the needle in and then bringing it through and out so you'll see that um, they, they have a, a similar look. A regular magnum would come in handy for the um, really saturating the blacks because uh, a regular magnum, um, so this is a 17 mag, will uh, pack the color in a lot quicker and fuller. In less amount of time than say a soft edge 17 mag so you can see here that me doing the uh, uh, similar hand speed and motion you can see the difference between the two 
Um, just because you know the soft edge magnums have those recessed needles on the edges so they're not going to get in and saturate as much so um, when I'm doing color work or um, want to get some really deep blacks I'll use the regular magnums and use the soft edges primarily more for areas where you know I need soft edges a round shader will pack in ink much better than a magnum however the one drawback is you know round needles are usually really tight groupings so uh, it's very tedious um, these work good in uh, small areas but for the most part I'm usually not patient enough so I'll, uh, I'll stick to uh, the magnums all right, so I'm gonna start uh, down here in this shading. I'm noticing that along this chin line, really dark through here, but uh, there's a separation between this um, this shadow underneath and the actual jawline. So um, I think I'm gonna start with a dark gray. I'm just gonna start my little circles. And see how this goes and I'll adjust my style accordingly if I see something's not working um, I already feel like um, it's a little dark I'm gonna dip in this one to bring it up a little bit um, going this way it just it, it feathers off this way so I'm just gonna try pushing the needle that way and coming out so I'm just trying a few different things now I'm doing the I was doing the uh, circles trying to go a little faster along the edge to um, kind of feather it out to make it soft and now I'm trying to just pull and then come out of the skin just to kind of soften that edge and um, this jawline underneath, I'm, I'm keeping the needle going this way to help define that. And it seems to me this, um, and granted we're looking at a photograph, so photos are a little hard. I mean, they're not really a true representation of the actual tattoo. I'm really just going off the information that it gives me. This may not be even close to how uh, Kent did this tattoo but if anything if I can use what I know and try and get something relatively close to this I'll at least have learned hopefully learned something in the process that I can hopefully add to my arsenal now it seems to me that it's getting a lot darker as it comes over here whether it is or not I don't know it's possible that uh, the light that was being cast over here when the photo was taken is affecting um, that but I'm just gonna go with uh, what I can see so I'm just gonna um, darken my grays up a bit it seems to me that it really goes black over here but you can still see a little bit of gray in this area so I'm just going to darken that gray a bit just before I come into um, black. Again, I'm mainly just using tight circles here and then I'm whipping a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and start going into the black over here. Alright, so as we start getting here, I'm going to get away from the 17. I'm going to bring it down. Um, I'll try a 9. Um, I'm going to start working in this jawline here. Um, I notice this edge along the jawline is not real sharp. So um, I'm probably just going to keep using the same techniques or maybe even a little bit of a back and forth in this area. In fact, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to try the back and forth. Um, 
The thing about the back and forth is it gives you a little bit of a soft edge. There's a real quick little back and forth in some of these areas. So I'm trying to um, really understand what's going on with all this texture. Um, obviously I'm just starting with my blacks. Uh, that's the easiest for me to really decipher at this point and then from there I can come off those blacks with some uh, lighter grays gradually uh, going lighter Again, there aren't really any uh, hard edges. Everything's kind of soft. So I'm just kind of uh, doing the back and forth Keeping an eye on where his darks are and just trying to follow along. So while I'm doing this, I'm this and this is tedious. This is obviously if you're watching this, you're you're well aware of how tedious this is. And so while I'm doing this, and I can't help but wonder as I'm working if uh, Kent was going through a similar process while he was doing this tattoo. really kind of a combination of pushing back and forth and little circles. I'm kind of jumping between both techniques right now. Um, this transition between this black and this gray right here is a little too abrupt, so I'm going to kind of work that edge with a little bit darker gray. And just kind of pushing, shoveling back and forth along that edge to kind of soften it. All right, so come moving back here. I'm trying to go to completion and then move forward. So through here, I'm gonna lighten that a bit. And noticing I'm just, di this is similar to just dipping between your inks, so. Um, If I want to lighten it, I'll dip in a lighter one. If I want to darker it, darken it, I'll dip in a darker one. Sometimes when I'm pushing this way, it looks like I'm going back and forth. Sometimes I am going back and forth, but sometimes I'm kind of coming up and out, but I'm doing it kind of quick just to kind of feather that edge. Again, I haven't really done, uh, only been using uh, three different techniques so far. Back and forth, tight little circles, and then whipping off edges. So far that's it. So that area right there is gonna be all black. When I was coming out of this hole, you'll see I was just kind of doing this motion here. I was following the contour and uh, just going back and forth, back and forth. A little darker on that edge there. And it looks a little darker on the back, too. Yeah, it's so easy to get uh, lost. Trying to decipher all this. But I imagine uh, the more uh, you do work like this, the easier it would become after a while. I don't think for these real little areas, I'm kind of doubting he would have used a liner through here, but I think I'm working on a smaller scale than he was. So um, my guess is maybe a little round needle was used for some of these little details, but... Let's come up here. So, as I get closer to these teeth, um, these are a lot, the edges are a lot sharper. So, even, you can get a, um, pretty sharp edge with your magnum if you're running it this way. Um, I don't know if that's what Kent did or not, but it's also possible 
to um, take a liner needle and line those. So I'll take a three. Just go around these edges that are really sharp and uh, see if I can get a similar effect that way. And that's, uh, and I'm taking note of, I'm taking mental note of this because uh, one thing I really like about this tattoo is the soft, it's really soft through here. Notice we didn't have any hard edges, and then you got that contrast of some really sharp edges up here around the teeth and it just really creates for a very interesting piece of art. Notice with my lining I'm not going real fast. Again I'm still running my machine. I haven't changed my machine speed at all. So uh, I gotta run those lines um, pretty slow. Let's go back to the magnum and let's uh, let's get up to these areas. So, plus these help give me some landmarks to help identify what I'm looking at. I'm seeing some variations in this mouth. It's not all. I'm sure on camera it all looks all black in there, but uh, and I'm not, again I'm not sure if that's just from the photograph from uh, the light. I don't know if it's all black, but what I am seeing is some variations. It's really black up up here under the upper teeth, and then it seems like in these areas here it's a really dark gray. So um, whether or not that's how he did it, I'm going to try and, and do, do it how I see it. So I'll work in uh, where I see the really black black, since that's what I'm using right now. And then I'll leave the areas open where I think it's a dark gray. And again, I could switch to a regular Magnum for the, um, for the really black areas. saturate better and faster. Oh, I, s I just want to jump up there. I can't. I gotta finish what I'm doing first. Alright, back to my magnum. Go on this edge. It's all very dark. Um, doesn't look real hard. So I'm just gonna use the magnum. Plus when things are, see how this jaw comes around and it disappears away from us. We want this to be a little softer, I think. The really sharp things, you know, we want more closer to us. Nice. One thing I'm going to do real quick is let's save. I haven't done that in a while. Cool, cool. Alright, then um, let's go to the dark gray and fill in these areas. <sighs> so, overall, I feel like my value changes are a little too extreme. So I'm not using a Magnum now. I'm using a five liner, but uh, I think in reality I'd probably be using um, five shader, seven shader, depending on how big this tattoo is. That would be my guess for a lot of these little details in the teeth.
so this other eye socket, I was noticing how sharp this nose is so sharp along that edge. And I noticed that this eye socket doesn't look as sharp. So um, I think I'm just going, instead of lining it, I'm gonna use a Magnum. Just so that the edge is a little softer because I think that's uh, part of the appeal of this tattoo is the sharpness through this nose and through these teeth is just so pronounced and I think it's more noticeable because of all the uh, softer stuff going on everywhere else. That was rough. That was really rough. That was really tedious. Um, I feel like with the techniques I used, I could probably pull off something pretty close. Obviously, considering what I did, they look pretty similar. It took a really long time. That took a lot of focus. Um, and uh, yeah, my brain kind of hurts. My body hurts. I bet you. Most of the black and gray work I do from here on out, I'm going to notice a uh, big improvement, I hope. Anyway, that's that. <laughs>